He's still worried. I'm not surprised. Still very anxious about all the police around the square. Wants to know what you're going to do about it. Me? What's you got to do with me in the price of fish? Of time and effort, not to mention money, has gone into this enterprise here. I'd hate to have to cancel it. He won't. He might, might have to. Can't move for the police. I told you, after your meeting, everything will turn around. And if it doesn't? It will. Nothing sure, then. Except Mr. Binnicombe, that is. Anyway, a decision's been reached. It's down to you to sort it all out. He'd like to make a deal with you in quickly. Or more fires might break out, he says. Bonfires all over the place. Oh, November the 5th's come round again. Right. right. Guy Fawkes night. And I'm the dummy on the firewood. I don't think Mr. Vinicom could have put it better himself. Tell him he's on. Mr. V understands, then. He reckons Wilmot Brown deserved all he got. Taking liberties with another man's wife like that. Respectable woman like Kathy Beale. Right out of order, that was. But he reckons we were silly. Both of us. In a word, stupid. I mean, he's right, isn't he? Big bright fire in the middle of the night. Now there's cops all over the place. Weren't thinking straight, were we? Could have been a bit sharper then. A couple of broken legs. Hang him up from a railing spike. I'm then... not listening. Then we're in this together. We've got to sort it out. It's down to us. I've just told you I'm not listening. Come on, Dan. I'll stop my neck out. I'm moonlighting for you. You owe me something. I owe you nothing. Oh, yes, you do, chum. Now, one way or the other, this is going to be sorted out. One of us, or both of us, is for the high jump. And remember, I just struck the match. You organised it, son. So they're going to bang you up for a lot more years than me if we have to do it that way. Push off. Every man for himself. Is that it, then? You've got it in. Maybe nothing more alone, it's. What do you want? A favour. What sort of favour? I want you to pass on a bit of info to someone. Who to exactly? A policeman. Grass. Something like that. I don't grass. You'll do as you're told. I want you to whisper a few words about Dennis Watts. Den? That's it. I think Den's all right. Don't we all? Look, I don't want all this. I can do without it. Anything else you can do without? In front of you. Oh, I know that, son. Even if you had to hop all the way to hospital on a broken yeah. leg, you wouldn't be scared, would you? You're threatening me? Yeah. Nah. Just giving it for instance. I mean, nobody likes violence. Should be able to sort out our differences without violence. I'll tell you what. You've done a bit for us in your time, right? Right. So here's another, for instance. Just supposing a little dicky bird perched on a wooden top shoulder and whispered little naughties about you. Where would you be then? In the nick, I suppose. No suppose about it, sunshine. She just sits there, cranking backwards and forwards on that knitting machine. She hardly speaks. Not like Kathy, is it? No, Pat. Do one of her famous tongue lashings right now. She won't come out. It's understandable, isn't it? I don't know what to do about it. Pete, there's nothing you can do. Yeah, but it's hard, Pete. I know, but it will take one day at a time. I just don't want to get up in the morning. Survival, you know, keep your chin up. I've got to see where I'm going, then. That's it, smile. The future's always brighter. It's not the future, it's the present. First Cathy, then the old mum, God bless her. Ian. Got the old bill on the daily, whether I go. Hello, Claire. <clears throat> oh, Kat, just talking about you. Yeah, yeah it's good to see you get out for a while. Yeah. Hi, Kat. Hi, Kat. Yeah, give a podcast, Kat. Everything all right? Fine. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've changed my mind. I don't want to drink. Pat, Pat, what? what can I do? Nothing. Come on, just come on. I just want to go home. Did you just come out, though? I've changed my mind. Okay, I'll come with you. I'm all right. Hey, Mum. Am I going to like this or am I going to regret it? Well, that's up to you, sir. Yeah, I suppose it is. What do you want? I need some information, sir. What about? That's what I need information about. Oh, you're very clever. I understand you travelled abroad last year. Oh, don't tell me the commissioner's jealous. Between the 14th of July and the 16th of August. Sounds about right. Where did you go? 
Oh, I'm not the swallows. I follow the sun. Where? Morocco. Nice. Lots of desert. No, I'm told. Well, didn't you notice? Well, I uh, stayed in the bar half the time. I ate sandwich with my toes. I understand you went on business. Holiday. What business would that be? Holiday business. Sorry? I don't think you'll listen to me. Oh, I am. I am. You could have fooled me. Big country I've heard, Morocco. Yeah, so have I. Where did you go there? You're not going to believe this. Try it. Casablanca. Great film. I like it. Fancy yourself as Humphrey Bogart? Yeah. And Ingrid Bergman. How about you? Conrad Wright. The Nazis, a Gestapo. That's you two, too. Where did you stay when you were in Casablanca? And don't say. Oh, as if I would. No, nothing so romantic. Where? Seaview Hotel. You're having me on. No, would I do a thing like that? Got any receipts? Well, I could... maybe. I don't know. I just move residence, and I don't think I'll put my hands on them right now. Book through a travel agent? Not exactly, no. What then? Well, as a friend arranged it for me uh, as a favour, I did a job for him and he repaid me with holiday. The name of his friend? Now, that I can't remember. He... I know he had one eye and a moustache. He talked with a lisp and walked with a limp. And he's left the country. What airline? No, I think he went by boat. You travelled by plane. What airline? Oh, well, they're all the same to me. I mean, it was a charter company. The name's gone. <laughs> wonder you made it in Morocco at all. No, it's funny you should say that, cos I remember saying at the time, Denny boy, so wonder you made it here at all. Can I ask you a question? That's how I'll answer. I know the feeling. What is all this you made of? I'm not a liberty, you say. Oh, in that case, far away. Did you stay at this Sea View Hotel all the time you were in Casablanca? Yes. I know. Well, make up your mind. Oh, my mind's made up. It's just my memory of what you see. What I've forgotten was that I moved in with a friend, a business acquaintance. Holiday romance? No, I wouldn't go as far as that. It was short and fat, I like them tall and skinny in skirts. Um, a local businessman took pity on me. His name? Now that, I can't remember. His name was, um, was it Ahmed Abdul Abdul Fred George? Anyway, the name's gone. Oh, I don't suppose you remember his address either. Not a fan, no. Of course, sir. Am I disappointing you? Look, I know I've got it somewhere, but I've just moved Residence. to... Residence. Right. Look, why don't you take time off from asking all these stupid questions and go over there yourself? You'll love it. No, I like the English summer and the winters. It's good for your skin. So I've heard. Anything else? Not for the moment. What do you mean there's more? You never can tell. Oh, I look forward to it. Have you been listening to some little dicky birds? Some sort of whistling creature, anyway. You won't find a thing. Sure as the driven snow? No, they've got plenty of sand over there. Maybe it's time I took another holiday. Maybe it is. Roly, you got some funny friends. Have I? Big feet, bracelets in their pockets. Lots of funny people around these days. Mr. Vinicum, know how friendly you are with the police. Well, I wouldn't say friendly exactly. What would you say then? I'd say you're imagining things. You do deals with them. We'll deal with anyone if it helps us get what we want. Well, don't think you've got what you want over this, and that's straight up. You never can tell. I can. And I'm telling you to get it in your peanut-like brain that you haven't got me where you want me over this. Because if I go down, I'll take plenty with me. That I'm really scared of jaws off everyone. We'll see. Quaking in their boots, they'll be knocking with their knees. Old Danny Watts is going to flatten a firm, bang us all up for good. They'll laugh in your face, sunshine. There's nothing you can do. Sure, mate. The only geezer you can bring down beside yourself is me, and I doubt very much if head office would lose too much sleep over that. In fact, to be straight up, they wouldn't give a tom tit. We'll see how clever you are when the police feel your collar. I'll still be smiling, sunshine. Don't you worry. I'll take what's coming to me, and I'll be well looked after. You can bet your bottom dollar on that, which is more than it's going to be said for you. I'll serve me time, keep your trap shut, I'll come out to a job and a pension, which is an option for you as well, me old fruit. Otherwise, no one will quote any odds on you at all. So get that into your nut. The harder you kick, the harder they'll come down on you. I'm not scared. Oh, come on, damn me, old son. You're being a wally. It's either you or me or the both of us.
Unless you want to set somebody else up for it. Who? Oh. How about Pete Beal? He had the motive. Geezer took an awful liberty with his missus. Shouldn't be too hard to convince the uncle. <laughs> You've got to be joking. It's up to you, dummy old son. For every year you're inside, we'll give you 20 grand tax free. Think about it. message. Well? I can't do it. I can't take the rap for the Dagmar. It's too much to ask. Yes, I know I'm being paid a lot of money. But I could be inside for five years and it ain't worth it. It's a huge chunk of life and life's too short and I can't afford to lose too many years out of it. Dennis, what exactly are you saying? I can understand that Mr. Vinnikin wants the pressure taken off Walford. I also know he's going to lean on me. He's doing that now, isn't he? I've got ties here. Things I care about. Things I've got to be here for. This is my life. I've spent my whole life here. I don't know any other life. I just can't leave it. No one's asking you to leave the square forever. No, but you're asking me to do the next best thing, queer my own pitch. I couldn't come back here as a convicted criminal. Anyway, I wouldn't want to. It's a dump anyway, so why worry? Because I care about it. I also happen to like living here. So you get on the phone to Vinicom and you tell him that there's no deal. It can't be done. I don't think you quite understand the position, then. It's not up to you. It's going to happen anyway. All you can do is make life easier for yourself or more difficult. You're a tiny, tiny minnow in a great big pond. Put it another way, you're a little man in a little place that's got tangled up with the big boys. You can't afford to mess around. Let's look at the situation realistically, shall we? If you're a good boy and cooperate, we'll see the police only have enough evidence on you for straight arson. That'll be three to five years, two with good behavior. Two years, plus a salary from the firm when you come out. Or, if you're not a good boy and make difficulties, we'll make sure you get down for arson a lot more nasties besides. In that case, it'll be seven to ten years, with no salary at the end of it. Or, third possibility, if you're a really naughty boy and you turn this deal down out of hand, well, you'll be dead. So that's not much of an alternative, really, not unless you fancy pushing up daisies. That's not an idle threat, then. When I say dead, I mean dead, as in mutton. So, one, you're banged up for two years, and you have a tax-free salary. Two, you're banged up for ten years, and you have no salary. Three, you're dead. Those are the choices. And Mr. Binnicombe wants his answer today. He's fed up waiting. All right, all right. I knew you were a sensible lad at heart. Shall I go and phone the good news? Just give me one more warning, eh? You're only delaying the inevitable. We open. Can we have a talk? Dog Den, get it out, please. Sorry. Come on, Rowley, out, all right? And stay out. Right, can we... Oh, look, can you just forget about that for a minute? I've been doing some thinking. Constructive thinking? Of course. Ah, thanks for now. Could you check the other cases outside? I knew you'd be sense in the end. Can I phone Mr. Vinicom now? No, I just hold on, all right? Just let me uh, finish what I've got to say. What you said out in the square was right. Of course. I'm out of my depth, I know. Yes. But I do want to live to see the ripe old age of three score years and ten. So, I'll agree to take a rep. Good boy. But 
But I don't agree to go inside for it. You're wasting my time. Now just hold your horses, all right? Good, you're an impatient woman, aren't you? I've got an idea. Go on. If I agree to take the rap, that means there'll have to be a trial. Obviously. And trials can be dangerous things. Morning, all. What do you want this cost then? Stick her on there, mate. Look, uh, you got a minute? Yeah. Um, don't run away, I'll never worry. Nah, you've got it all wrong, mate. Wilmot Brown does the magistrate's court bit on his own. Cathy just has to turn up at the Crown Court. Not necessarily. Apparently now, if that cow son's lawyers kick up enough fuss, she can appear in the next few weeks. I don't know. I mean, it's his second appearance today, right? Then he's a third, then it'll probably be a fourth. I don't understand it anymore, Ben. One thing I do know for sure is if Cathy does have to appear, ain't gonna be pleasant for her, is it? Them slags are gonna try and shoot her down in flames. Make her she's lying. I see it then. She ain't the same person. Well, not since all this happened. I mean, she won't pull out the stool. Just sitting there, in that flat all day long, staring at that bleeding knitting machine. Can't even talk to me. Can't go anywhere near her. Then, look, there's something playing on my mind. Look, what I like to ask you is, what do you think she got the old thing wrong? I'm not with you, mate. Well, you know, like, she led him on, and he's innocent. You are a prize pillock. If he's innocent, Angie ain't an Alki and a liar. That's how innocent he is, and I know, all right? Now, never let me hear you say anything like that again. Do you understand? All right, then, all right, then. Just getting too much for a minute. Money you were gonna give me if I went inside. Except this time, I'll start a new life somewhere else. I'll take the heat out of Warford. I could lose myself permanently, if you like. Hmm. Oh, come on, Joe. Ain't, ain't easy for me, you know. I'm agreeing to exile here. I'm taking the police off your back. I'm closing the file on the Dagmar, and you're getting your pound of flesh at the same time. It's not going to cost you any more, and it'll be happier for everyone concerned. But if a side effect, it'd be much pleasanter for you. Well, it depends where you're going to send me, of course. If it's my bear, you can forget it. I'd rather go inside. In case this escaped your attention, my ex-wife hangs out here. Now, you stick a pin anywhere else in the entire globe, and I'll be quite happy to go. Rio, Brazil, Australia. Yeah, they reckon Australia's very nice. It's also full of ex-criminals. All right, then. Not so fast. I need to think about this. I need to make some phone calls. When? This people are impatient. This is my life we're talking about here. My whole life, which is just about to be turned upside down. Look, Pat, all I said was, I don't know why you don't. My own right, I'm opening up. You've got to be thirsty. Where do you think you think? It's opening time. I'm about to manage all by myself. Hey, that's not true, Pat. I'd help. Yes, well, if it hadn't been for Diane and Ricky, I'd have been right up the creek. You're standing in for dot, that's all. Standing for dot? This is your job. This is what you get paid for. I'm sorry. She said you'd only be five minutes. Donna, I don't like your attitude. I haven't got time to stand and talk to you now. Just ask Diane how far she's got with the grub, please. Well, pass me the cup, then I've done everything else. Oh, I see. I've got to take orders from school kids now. That is great. I beg your pardon. Nothing. Better buck your ideas up, young lady. I'll speak to you properly later. Hey, Rowley. No, darling. You are Den's dog. You don't live here no more, eh? Huh? You go. Try those glasses or not? Small hygiene. Let them dry in the air. Donna, I've told you before, I like everything put away neat and tidy at the end of each session, OK? Wait two seconds when I get back at 5.30. Yes, I want those dried and put away now, please. Then never minded. And when you've dried them and put them away, I want to see you upstairs. But I can't. I'm meant to be meeting Wixie. Upstairs, Donna, in five minutes. I think we should have a little chat, don't you? Rack it. Come on, you two. And glue yourselves from the box. Go and get some fresh air for a change. I want to talk to Donna. Like the T-shirt, Donna. Right, Donna, sit down. I think we'd better get a few things sorted out, don't you? I suppose so. Frank and I want to run a happy ship. That's very important to us. A happy ship means that staff have got to fit in, right? Yeah. So, three house rules. First, you don't turn up late for work. Second, you do things the way Frank and I want them done, not how Den or Ange or anybody else did them. Right? Yeah. And third, you're cheerful and polite at all times. Frank can't abide a sulky woman, nor can I. You stick to those three rules and we'll get along just fine. OK, off you go. Oh, and Donna, you can take this as a warning. You won't get another, is that clear? Yeah. Anything you want to say? No. Well, that is, yeah, I want to uh, apologise for being late today, that's all. Right. Well, let's forget the past, shall we? You turn up for work at 5.15 sharp 
And we'll start again, this time on the right footing. Oh, and Donna, message from Simon. Yeah? He popped in to say he couldn't make it this afternoon. But we were supposed to see a flat together. Where else has he gone? I don't know. I wouldn't pin your hopes on him, love. He's bound to let you down. She all right? I'll go and see. Have you rung them yet? Yes. And what do they say? I don't know yet. I'm waiting to hear. Patience. you staring at? I don't like to see you sitting out on your own, that's all. Why not? You find I might get propositioned? It's just not you. Look, let me go and get Pete and get him to come and join No. Me. Thanks, Tim, but no. Right, I'm quite happy by myself. I don't want Pete. I've quite enough of families. Other people in general. Do you want to talk? <sighs> no fear. I've done enough talking. I just want to get sloshed. Oh, stop staring, will ya? What's wrong with that? Everybody else around here gets sloshed. Why not me for a while, eh? Why not me for a change? I just want to change your scene then, all right? In here. I'm sick to death of action replays. I hear it's all not brown second here. Look, I said I don't want to talk, thanks all the same. Why don't you just go back to work, eh, then? Oh, go on, get yourself a glass then. And another bottle. Because this one's all mine. Yeah, here, breathe another bottle, will you? You've had enough. Oh, shut up. It's such a disposable. Then I keep that dog out about ten times this evening. No, I'm sorry. Rowley, stay here, away. Here. They say you've got to drink to drive your sorrows away, don't they? So get us another bottle, darling, eh? Then this is being a bit awkward. She'd better be got out, too. I can't just kick her out. She's my best pal's wife. Don't care who she is. You know what hurts the most, see, Joanne? It's that my old man don't believe me. Even now, I told him the complete truth. Oi, are you listening to me, darling? I mean, I bet you never let yourself get in a mess like me, Just let go of me and make your love. That's what I'm talking about. I'll let you into a little secret, shall I? I hate them. I hate them like poison. Up yours and all, Dennis. What? I'll go and find a thing, get the car to let Listen, we'll get someone to take you home, OK? Now, in the meantime, just sit nice and quiet. Nice and quiet? I've been doing that all my life, darling, sitting nice and quiet. Well, I'm going to bust with it. Well, I said quiet. Oh, snooty cow. She's a snooty cow, that one. But at least she sleeps alone. Oh, at last. Could you get your backside over and pick up Kath? She's out of her brain. Well, be as quick as you can, will you? He's on his way out. Oh, I'm sorry about that, but she's had a bit of a rough time. So I gather. Yeah. They phoned back. And surprisingly enough, they quite like the idea. What do you suggest? Not in so many words. Let's just say they can see the advantages. And what now? We wait while they look into it and see if it's feasible. Did they give a hint of uh, where? When, where and how comes later, if they agree. But it looks to me as if you'll be ending your days in sunnier climes. Oh, well, Ronnie Biggs of Walford, that's me. Same as I was getting down today. Same. So what do you say? Yeah, all right. Great, that's all. Great. Where can you start? Well, give me a couple of days and I'm all yours. Look forward to it. Right. Well, how about giving us hand now, you know, just for lunchtime? Well, right now. Well, it's not inconvenient, is it? No, all right. Get your jacket off. That's that one settled. Now it's just the dog to worry about. Oh, don't worry, love. It's not showdown time yet. Ain't it? I just wondered if you might have reconsidered. No, we're suited, thank you. Position filled. Frank, could I have a word with you in private for a minute, please? Oh, I don't think so. Don't worry, it's all been taken care of. Right. So I see. Bye. So how's that, Mr. Mannell? Right on time. I take punctuality for granted. Got any plans for this place yet? I'd rather that we concentrate on things that do concern you, like Dennis Watts. Last I heard, things were still up in the air. 
On your way here, you will no doubt have noticed that the police are still very much in evidence. The sooner they get back to doling out parking tickets and taking bribes, the better. As a result, it is highly likely that Mr. V will agree to his terms. It seemed pretty fair. I mean, old Den hasn't been too greedy, has he? Mr. V will be the best judge of that. These things have to be considered from every angle. We also have to look to the future. In the interim, Mr. Watts may well have a change of heart, won't there? Den's no fool. He won't back out at the last minute. If he did, it would be most unwise. I hear things are progressing well on the wharf development. Yeah, any minute now they're starting on the foundations. Good. You better tell them to hold up with the ready mix for another 24 hours. We may have an extra piece of hardcore. My love, yeah. what are you thinking, babe? Oh, I something new. You want to take the evening off? Oh, that no funny. Look, I'm serious. I've been thinking about the new licensing laws. I've Frank, got my... we've only been here a couple of months. Let's settle in first. Let's see what the other pubs in the area do before we change anything. All right, babe, you're the boss. Right. Have the oh. kids found Rowley yet? No, they haven't given me, me thank you. Oh, better get around there then. Oh, fair it is, they stuck it out. You've got to give them that. Yeah, but a little word like sorry wouldn't be in our place, would it? No, I wouldn't, mate, would I? Better go and see a man about a dog. Hey, Michelle, do you know what I like about this place? Mm -hmm. The fact that there's no upstairs, no downstairs, no customers, no bar, no nothing except this. You like it then, do you? Yeah, how about you? I love it. Love being on my own. Oi! What do you mean, being on your own? You know. No, together but independent, that's what you mean. Someone you really like, but no emotional demands. That's exactly what I mean. No warring families. No stepping in between other people's arguments. No patching up the same old quarrel. Just you and me and peace and quiet. That's <sighs> her, Donna. Michelle, why did you ask around? Well, why did I ask around? I didn't. No, you no, did. you did. She told me and you did. she told me that you'd up. Right, did you? Tell us, I went on. No, hold on, I've got a better idea. Look, we were just saying, right, that this is our place where we do what we want, when we want, so we won't see her. We can't do that. Says who's going to stop us? Look, do you want to see her? No. Right, then we won't. It's as simple as that. What, she can see through the window? Yeah, don't wait, then. <laughs> <laughs> I've just had a ball. What? Maybe I should pull around and lock Shh, the door. she's come to the window. <laughs> so this is what living on your own is all about, is it? Crouching on your own floor. <laughs> What will kept me? You got legs, haven't you? you? Want to see me? You pop round to me, otherwise you wait till I'm ready. Good old Pat. Who told you? Who told me what? What are you Nothing. talking about? Nothing. I want you to do me a favour. You feeling all right in the head? Just go and sit down and listen, will you? I can't involve Sharon. Pete's got a mouth like Blackwall Tunnel. You're the only one I can trust. I'm flattered. You ought to be. My experience of a bloke says that. It's usually in trouble. And you've had lots of experience. Now, I may or may not want you to do something for me. Like what? Things that I can't take care of myself. It's all in there. What is? To be opened when necessary and not before, understood? Oh. When the time comes, if the time comes, only then do you open it. I don't know what you're going on about. Not planning to jump off a bridge or something, are you? No. I'm not about to top myself. The opposite, in fact. If you ain't suicidal, you've got to be in trouble. I'm OK. There's nothing happening. So what are we doing here? You're here because you're the only one I can trust. Now, will you do as you're told and look after these for me and ask no more questions? I don't know what's going on, but give it here. There's been a lot of changes around here, Dan. I wouldn't like to see you go. Who said anything about going? In fact, who said anything at all? I was never here. See you tomorrow, Pat. Same as ever was. Look after Rowley for me. Yeah, I'm working on that one. You make sure you give him a good arm. Home's the place you run away from. Like you said. Subject to the conditions I've mentioned, Mr. Vinicom has agreed. All that we have to hope for now is that Mr. Watts will keep to his side of the bargain. He will. If he doesn't, well, let's just say that arrangements have been made. Just leave it with me, OK? Turn your mouth, please. Come on, guys. Good night, guys. Thanks very much. Good night. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night, sweetheart. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I'll be sorry, I'll be. Oh, oh, oh. Lovely, lovely. Here you go, baby. Another day, another dollar. That didn't do much good, did it? Blimey, give it a chance, Pat. Well, what am I going to tell Den? Don't tell him nothing yet. Anyway, I think it shows good spirit on behalf of the kids and knock that up, don't you? Yeah. I should think so as well. Oh, little blighter. It's on. When? As soon as you accept. Where? To be revealed later when you're on your way. Yeah, well, I want this organised properly. Dennis, how many times do I have to tell you? 
You're dealing with professionals who take care of their own. You'll be provided with a car, a passport, a place to stay, travel documents, and enough money in the appropriate currencies. Within 24 hours, you'll be just a memory around here. Just make sure you're ready to move as soon as they say. Yes? I don't want this to be a fix. I am not going to be a sacrifice. Make up your mind. The police will be here soon. Are you going to accept our kind offer or not? Good. Time to say your goodbyes, Dennis. You're about to run away from home. Next on Drama, we visit Walford and the working class inhabitants of Albert Square as we go back in time with classic EastEnders. <laughs> <laughs> 